In this episode, I will share all the secrets I learned about painting the interior skins of the Airstream. Painting the Airstream was definitely more time consuming than I thought it would be, but I wanted to put forth every effort not to scathe the perfectly formed interior skin, only update the lovely 80s mustard yellow nose caps and the vinyl skins that resemble the faux sponge painting texture, complete with the brown patches around the windows and other walls that I can only assume came from years and years of too much sun exposure. And of course, the classic faux vinyl wood look had to go. The first step was taking down all the window dressings and curtains and whatever else I no longer wanted in the Airstream and I didn't want to get paint on. The first step is to scrub away all the sticky grime that was built up all over the interior skin from the past 40 years. And I found that a heavy duty household cleaner like TSP works pretty well for this. And then I prepped all the surfaces with imperfections like cracks and holes, starting with a crack in the front ABS plastic nose end next to the control panel. And I guess I'm obsessed with this plastic bonder by JB Weld because I'm using it for it seems like everything and um, I'm gonna use it now on this uh, little crack in the front nose of the Airstream because uh, until I figure out a better way to replace this whole thing um, it's it's just gonna stay for now. I found out about JB Plastic Weld from the Airstream forum page, and everyone said this stuff was the best to fix any plastic cracks in the Airstream, so I thought I'd give it a try. The key is to use a disposable container and mix equal parts of the base hardener and the epoxy resin. Then you want to grab some other type of random disposable thing to mix up the resin and the hardener very thoroughly for about a minute. And then you want to work pretty quickly from there because it does start to harden a couple minutes after you mix it. So from here, I just lathered on the plastic weld to my crack and let it bond for about 30 minutes. And boom, no more crack. So I can attest to this stuff. It does work really well and I would highly recommend it. After cleaning, the next thing I did is sand around all the little holes then I used a non-trinking putty to fill in the holes and let that dry overnight. The real elbow grease begins when you get to sand all the walls for painting. Hopefully I have killer shoulders by the time this is done. So I started by using my electric sander to sand heavily around the holes that I filled in. Then I gave the wall one or two good swipes with the sander to make sure that the primer would bond well to the wall. I knew I definitely wanted to get rid of the yellowish plastic color onto the end caps, so I researched the best paint to use on these, and most people said that spray painting was definitely the way to go since it's made out of ABS plastic and has such a smooth finish. So I sanded the plastic nose caps, wiped them down, and chose Rust-Oleum paint plus primer in flat white. It took about four coats at separate times to completely cover this area.
For the walls, I used Valspar Latex Interior Bonding Primer and used a Wooster Mohair Blend with a quarter inch nap roller brush to apply the paint to the walls. I did one solid coat of primer on the interior skin and two coats of the primer on the wood veneer support walls. I originally started off by applying the bonding primer with a 3 quarter inch nap wool blend roller brush and quickly found out that this was not the right brush to use because this primer is super thick and it definitely left a texture behind that was not ideal. So I would recommend either using a quarter inch nap roller brush with a very finely woven mohair blend or wool blend or just a straight foam roller for smooth surfaces. Although the foam roller dried really quickly with the thick paint, so I found out the mohair blend worked a lot better. To paint the more fine places that requires a paintbrush, any brush will work as long as the brush says it's meant for smooth surfaces. And that just means that the hair on the brush is not as thick or coarse, so it applies the paint in a much more smooth texture. For the final coat, I used Valspar Perfect White Interior Paint in Eggshell with the same type of roller brush. This process went 
a lot faster because the interior paint was nowhere near as thick as the primer, so applying it was a lot speedier. Overall, I would say the great adventure of painting the Airstream interior skin was highly successful. It dried very pretty, even, and it's easy to wipe stains off, so I am pretty happy with it. Subscribe to this channel and follow me on my quest to find a meaningful, simple life through enjoying life's small pleasures, spending quality time with family, and of course, taking on a massive Airstream renovation.